I'm gonna show you one of the most important topology tricks that you've ever seen in your life. And I already know that this video is not gonna get no views because it's not any flashy bullshit about the new update or the new add-on that we all know is not gonna make you into a better 3D artist. So this video is just for the guys who are actually trying to get good at 3D modeling, who are actually trying to improve their technical skills so you can become a good 3D artist, who don't need to be entertained like children by music in the background or flashy editing or whatever, okay? I had a student ask me the other day, what's the right way to cut holes in shapes while you have a subdivision surface modifier acting on that shape? And the shape has to have... The hole has to have a shape like a hexagon or an octagon or something, and the edges on the inside need to be sharp. How do you correctly sharpen these edges, right? I'm going to give you a very important topology trick which, which you have to understand. It's going to help you a lot in the future. And this specifically was his situation. He had a shape which was something like this, basically like a subdivided cube. And that thing had a subdivision surface modifier on it. And then he inset this surface. He went W loop tools to turn this into a circle. Now this is an octagon. And then he extruded this downwards. He scaled this hole down or whatever. He had something like this. Now this is an octagon, but because of the subdivision surface modifier, the edges are round and smooth. They're molten. They're not, they're not sharp. How do you make these edges sharp? And his initial solution was to select this face loop on the inside and to just apply a bevel with control B because that adds some extra supporting geometry onto these edges, which is going to make them look sharper, right? Now, the problem is that while this does make the edges sharper, it also creates this pinching shit on the corners around the outside, right? So you can't have this. This is unacceptable. This is a complete atrocity, right? And initially, I proposed to him a, an alternative solution for how he can avoid this pinching. And my solution was this. You're going to undo this bevel, and instead, you're going to create a new bevel. On that new bevel, you're going to change these settings here in this menu, right? First of all, you got to have two segments and a shape value of one. That's a given. But by default, when you create a bevel like this, don't get rid of this menu. We're still going to do something here. By default, when you make a bevel like this, you get this little quad right here, which has this inverted angle. And that's what causes the folding because Blender doesn't know how to subdivide this properly. So that's what's giving you this little pinching going on here in the corner. But you can fix this by rearranging this geometry simply by going to this miter outer box right here and changing from sharp to patch. And as you can see, that kind of rearranges the geometry on this corner right here. And that makes the problem go away, or at least you can't see the problem anymore. And that's one way to solve this problem, okay? Now, this is all good for now. It looks like it's good, but there are still some problems with this solution. For example, although it looks very clean and very smooth right now, if you scale this up and you bring it closer to the outer edges, you're still going to get this folding and pinching going on on the sides, okay? And even if you bring these closer to the middle where you don't have this pinching, if you apply the subdivision surface modifier and you inspect the geometry on this model, it's going to be a complete disaster, right? So you don't want to show this to anybody. This is embarrassing. You make sure you don't ever let anybody see this type of topology, especially if you're trying to get hired in a studio. This is completely unacceptable, right? So there's a different way that you can create these shapes, which is something which is based on a technique that I always teach on my channel. And this is why I'm trying to tell you guys that topology is one of the most important things because there's not really any other way to create this type of shape correctly, the technically professional way, okay? And here's how you do that. I always tell you guys that anytime you're trying to create any type of feature in an object, whether it's a hole, whether it's something sticking out, whether it's whatever, right? You have to first make sure that you have enough geometry to support this, okay? You have to have geometry which is basically going to be like the resolution of this object, which is going to allow you to create objects with lots of detail and lots of features on them, right? So in this case, here's the correct way to create this type of hole with perfect geometry, with perfect topology. You're first going to take a cube and you're going to subdivide it a couple of times with W subdivide. If W doesn't do it for you, you can also go up here to edge subdivide right here, do that a couple of times. And I think this is going to be enough subdivisions for me, okay? Or maybe we can do another one, but it doesn't really matter. Now, the point here is you have to select a surface, which when you delete is going to give you a number of edges around this hole, which you can check right here. It's going to give you a number of edges, which is divisible by the number of sides on the shape that you're trying to cut into this object. So for example, let's say we want to create a hexagon here. Well, a hexagon has six sides and 24 is divisible by six, which means if we subdivide that hexagon, we're going to be able to connect that with the geometry around this hole here. Okay, now in this case, 24 is also divisible by 8, so you can also use an octagon, but let's just use a hexagon for now. And now what you have to do next is with Shift S, you're going to snap the 3D cursor to this edge loop over here, okay? And with Shift A, you're going to add a new circle. In this Add Circle menu here, you can change the number of vertices to 6, which also means 6 edges. 
and now you're going to scale that down so it fits inside this hole and we now have to subdivide this so we have 24 edges on this circle right here on this hexagon right here and to do that just press w subdivide and change the number of cuts to two because that's going to turn each edge into three edges and now when you select this well now it has 18 so we got to undo it we got to add an extra cut all right so subdivide we need three cuts on each of these because now you have 24 vertices, right? Because four times six equals 24. So now when you select this, you can also shift alt right click to select this edge loop here. For me, it's shift option because I'm using my MacBook, but you can go W bridge edge loops and that's going to connect these two edge loops with only quads. You have to also make sure that you're in edge select mode if you want to be able to fill this in this manner, all right? And now if you add a subdivision surface modifier, you already know how subdivision surface modifiers work, where it makes a corner round. But if you add supporting geometry, if you add geometry near this corner, it tightens up the corner, okay? That's exactly what's happening over here because now we have this vertex and the curve here is shaped the way it is because it's limited by these two vertices. And if we bring these two vertices closer, it's gonna be sharper. And if we take them further away, it's going to be a lot smoother. It's going to be a larger curve, right? So now, the purpose of this geometry here is that it allows us to control how tight this curve is going to be so we can sharpen these corners further. And to do that, you're going to do the following. With Alt right click, you're going to select this entire edge loop and then in vertex select mode, with Shift right click, you're going to deselect the vertices on the corners like this, all right? So now if you go to edge select mode, you only have the edges in the middle selected. And you can now switch your individual, you can now switch the pivot point to individual origins. So instead of medium point and instead of scaling them like this, you can scale the individual selections, right? So if you scale this up, you're gonna bring the vertices closer to this corner and they're all gonna do that simultaneously. So they're all gonna be equal, right? So now you're gonna tighten up this corner even more. And of course, if you want to, you can have even more geometry if you would have selected, if you would have further subdivided this cube, you would have had more geometry here. So instead of this being a six by six surface, it will be a 12 by 12 surface or something. But anyway, now you can take this shape and you can extrude it, right click, lower it down on the Z axis and scale it down. Now you just have two quick things to take care of. You have to bevel this to sharpen it and you gotta fill this with clean topology because you can't fill this with an angle. It's gonna give you shit like this, right? So instead, you're gonna select this edge loop, go up here to face, grid fill, and usually Blender is gonna be able to recognize this by default, but in this case, you want to set the span to the number of edges that you have on one edge from this hexagon here. And in this case, one edge on the hexagon has four edges means you can use a span of four you might also have to adjust the offset but in this case the default settings works work pretty damn well and all you got to do now is tighten up these outer corners so in face select mode you're going to use alt right click to select this edge loop right here all right and now you're going to go to select select loops select a boundary loop that's going to deselect all the edges on the inside and it's going to leave only the bordering edges of this area which was previously selected only these are going to stay selected right so now you can go control b Add another bevel on the inside. Make sure you don't get no clipping over here on the inside. If you pay attention to this geometry down here, you don't want anything like this. You just need a little bevel here to sharpen everything up. And now you created this shape with perfect topology, quads only, right? Even Thomas Cohen, if he's watching this, he would approve. And he would probably agree that this is indeed the right way to do this. This is a good subdivision surface or sub D workflow procedure, right? So this is an extremely important mechanism that you have to understand about topology, okay? If you like this tutorial, then check out the Digitally Enhanced program where we teach about this type of stuff because I'm over here trying to teach people to become professionals, okay? I'm over here focusing on how you can develop the skill that you actually need to become a professional in 3D. I'm not trying to entertain nobody. We're not children. We're trying to learn how to do what you have to do in order to make yourself a professional or in order to actually be a good 3D artist because we're not just doing this shit for fun, okay? So check out the Digitally Enhanced program. The link is below. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.